edge section is going to be more like edge section. So let's get freely on how uh, first we just get into the community of interested in reality AI, what you think about reality AI at the front. No one is interested in generative AI or yeah. uh, Javis, anyone else? Okay, maybe Javis, you can start uh, saying something. Other my photo. Yes, I think I'm more from the other uh, uh, pause. I think I'm more inclined to the generative AI. I have a little bit uh, confusion about. I know I like uh, the machine learning part, but I think I'm more inclined to the generative AI. Have you made any research what generative AI uh, requires something related to this, just to see how you could be, maybe it will be fitted for you? Have you researched? Uh, no, I didn't do any specific research. I just uh, saw some uh, some things on the internet, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't specifically research on it. So basically your choosing is based on the project that you have worked on and everything, you are more passionate with the generative AI, right, Chavis? Yes, based on the project that we had previously, I think I'm more interested on that and uh, yes, it's, it's, I think it's based on the projects we had. Okay, great, thank you for sharing. Uh, any other people who are interested in the AI who are thinking about that? Okay, we have a worker. Anybody else? So how many are you? Okay, Thomas, can thank you. How many of you are sure that you don't want to be in the genetic aircraft maybe? We have Jared I'm thinking this is for positive one. Those who don't want it, you can pick me the down thumb reaction. Not sure, okay, that is a fair answer. Michael, you can speak up. Michael, you can speak up if you are raising hand. Okay, so how many of you are not sure or sure? The simple response, either give it with a reaction or on the chat. Okay, a lot of not sure. Yeah, we will come to the difference on that one, Michael. I just want to see how many people are passionate about this particular track when they are not sure. Okay, so maybe let's just go to the presentation part and see what's required if you choose to go to Genesis AI. So first let's discuss what is exactly the difference between machine learning and generative AI. I mean, they are practically similar. So generative AI somewhat is not complex compared to machine learning, but if you go to the job world and see only different job sites and research, those two come uh, together. So they they want AI engineers slash machine learning engineer. So uh, if you are interested in a generative AI, it doesn't mean you don't have to worry about machine learning. You have to the job on the job market. If you are lucky enough, you can get on the AI part only on the AI part as a generative engineer, which focus mostly on the like the projects that you have done on the rug and stuff, 
without really deep going to the machine learning part. But it's not likely. It's, it's likely that you are also going to be involved in the machine learning part. So even if you are choosing generative AI on the job market, machine learning has a lot more job positions. And most jobs with generative AI also they are out in combination with machine learning skills. So you will need machine learning skills to some extent at least. Uh, when you go to the job search phase, you will notice that one. You will see a lot of machine learning skills needed in addition to being an AI engineer. That's what happened on the last course training. Also, a lot of machine learning in their job application were happening. So uh, I would recommend you personally to also give a space for machine learning skills because you don't know what kind of job you are going to get. So most like I said, machine learning will be part of big part of the AI positions, but there are positions that might not require you to do in deep machine learning, like the project that you are doing now that focus on rag. If you get those kind of jobs, nice, but you have to uh, open your options. So having the skills to some extent in machine learning will help out. They go hand in hand. So you have to know machine learning generative AI will go in hand in hand. So just be ready to uh, have more skills with both areas. I mean, they are the same. So just don't leave the machine learning part saying I just want generative AI, so I don't need that one. It won't work that way. You will need it. So if we go to what kind of professions is this profession that I list, it also can work for machine learning skills. Uh, so first and foremost, you will need software engineering back, uh, skill. Now all of you may have a software background. It's okay, but um, this three months at least makes you uh, connected with development front end, back in development, integration of both. So you are now on the basic level at least in software engineering. So you have to improve on those areas. So if you pick a language, so for the backing of this month, you are more connected with Python, right? So improve that. My Python skill is really required in the machine learning generative AI work. So improve that one. JavaScript is really the important tool when it comes to front end engineering, front end part. So you have to uh, improve your skill on JavaScript, SQL. This is more, it's a basic uh, requirement to, to have this knowledge, SQL, when you are in generative in machine learning area uh, tracks. But most importantly, for those of you who are interested in data engineering, SQL, you have to master it. It's really uh, a lot of SQL happen on the data engineering part, but uh, to at least to some uh, basic or template level, having the SQL knowledge as a AI engineer wouldn't hurt, but I wouldn't emphasize more on SQL. I would emphasize more my uh, energy on Python and JavaScript as a generative AI engineer. So improve your skills in TensorFlow or Python. These are machine learning tools you need to know. Uh, so it will have to have to be comfortable at least. You don't have to master them. You're likely to go out on the job search as a junior engineer. So at least know to some extent what a junior should know. Knowing what the purpose of these tools are, basic understanding will help out. Uh, improve your skills in testing. Uh, these are just common things to have as a developer. Testing skill, uh, familiarity with agile methodology. This just are the whole process of when it comes to developing any application. The testing DevOps parts, deploying, understanding deployment for different areas, just general skills to have dockerization, this kind of DevOps part of tools to know is really important. So having software, you need to give a place for your software engineering skill because you need it. Especially in generative AI track, you will involve yourself, you will be involved in front end development, back end development. So the whole software engineering concept will happen in generative AI, not only doing the back end work uh, on notebook or anything. So uh, give a place you have a, a deficiency on software engineering skill, you need to give it a place on your schedule and improve those skills. The others would be as a generative AI 
engineer they are more on sinister law, like the one that you guys have been practicing on and if they are you should research at least just you don't have to know every model but at least could be comfortable with the most popular use like gpt and long chain llama index just pick one model and be really comfortable with just interviews or interviews at least at least you have something to talk about so just try to show uh, you ha you have done your research, you know some things. You just are in the process of improving yourself. So you have to show that. So uh, don't be overwhelmed with all these tools you have to learn. Just pick one of them from each area and try to be as comfortable as you can with those skills. Uh, deployment, uh, we have already talked about it. So when it comes to deployment, there are deployment for if, every application that you do will go through the process of deployment at the end. So try to understand, uh, be familiar with at least one tool. Right now you guys are comfortable with AWS. So try to see different aspects of the AWS. So when you have what's your background in deployment, you can talk about it well. So you should give it a place and just at least pick one tool and to try to see how deployment the devops part work for the rug we have talked about in the last year rug ops it's another form of devops just for rug applications again the tools aws google cloud there are a lot of tools that with the deployment service so just at least in theory be comfortable uh, with one of them most DevOps are not free to practice on, but at least know the experience that you have in the streamers and add theoretical knowledge support for if, if interviews came up, so just be comfortable on one of them. Not perfect, just be comfortable in discussing them. Uh, what are the requirements needed for generative AI engineer? Uh, to know one would be prompt design prompt is going to be one of the big uh, key points for to know for a generative AI. so you have to know the different from designs it depends on the use case of course but how detailed how you have experienced on the last process in prompt engineering so you can see how models affected how with how your prompt is written so try to improve your skills on prompt design try to the different aspects when it comes to designing a prompt and their use so it's, it's a requirement skill knowledge to have as a generative uh, engineer better database knowledge evaluation metrics like ragas there could be other tools just at least in theory be confident to talk about them the hugging phase is really an important platform to know for generative AI, uh, machine learning engineer models fine tuning right pipeline a front and back and from words. Uh, this you can just take them like a category and from each from this one, just pick one tool, one method, and understand that. And at least you have something to call, to talk about, so you will not be overwhelmed from front end. Just pick one framework and try to be as good as you can, uh, at least on intermediate level for the back in the same. Uh, for rag pipeline, I mean, you will experience on this because there are different approach methods that you can perform a rag pipeline, right? So try to discover all those things. In theory, you need to be uh, ready to be a good explainer or in those in this area. So try to be as comfortable as, as much as you can on this area as an uh, engineer. These are the likely things to be it to be expected for generative engineers to know. So make sure uh, to give it time and really be comfortable. What are the positions that you can have as a generative engineer? So you can be an AI researcher. And since it's a new technology, researching jobs in AI are likely to be found in job sites. Uh, the same thing in blockchain, 
there's a lot of types of blockchain research or blockchain research if you've seen it so these new technologies there's a there's a place for uh, a position as a researcher so you can be an ai researcher you can be an ai software engineer this is just a position name that you find on job site a uh, machine learning engineer which is not a uh, developer campus i mean like i said they're practically the same tracks uh, there is a creative technologist where creative technologies uh, i mean it could be used for the term creative technologies can be used for everyone it's just something that has uh, it's a description for someone in the tech world that uh, can use their skills for creative something so uh, you, you, when you look for jobs you shouldn't just say, look for ai jobs i mean there could be companies who are, who are not related with AI, that they might require creative technologies. It's just like the uh, people who are a tech skill and that can help them improve their company or their something. It could be a government or an institution or it could be anything unrelated to with uh, this uh, technology world, software development world, but the company might need a skillful person to help them grow their company. So they might need an AI engineer on their company to help them uh, to come up with creative ideas to improve their product or good to improve their thing. Now it's not related with AI development or any software thing, but they they will require these uh, people they call creative technologies that can help them to create these uh, ideas and come up with using technology and help them grow. So when you look for jobs, just don't focus only on AI machine learning jobs. It could be any job they might need your skill in their particular area. So we call those kind of people creative technologies. So an AI engineer, a uh, generative AI developer can get a job like a creative technologist in company. So it's just uh, there could be AI ethics. So if we see this particular page, on AI ethics, so it's also one job. You can be hired as an AI ethics, where which particularly is similar with researcher, but not quite. It's like in professional level. So you will be, you will have a very solid understanding of AI. You will get a practical. You have a practical experience of what AI can do. So I, as an AI ethics, you have these qualities. You have a solid education. You know everything about. Not, I mean, you will be hired as a junior, so you don't have to know everything, but a, a professional AI fit has a solid education in the AI world. They have a practical experience. Uh, they have a networking. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. So basically, an AI has a solid education. When it comes to AI, they have a practical experience. They are actually uh, experienced as a developer working with AI, and they have this good network. They know how to build a network. They participate in different conferences related to AI. They know uh, they you need to have uh, at least you will work to have a good networking when it comes to AI. You are really up to date with any information with AI. You are really uh, active with being uh, up to date with any AI news information. Uh, you, like I said, you are stay informed. So this is basically what AI is does. They are like more on a professional level. They are involved in policy making when it comes to AI. Uh, in government institutions, they speak on conferences like as a representative for the AI part. So this is one one job position that you can be with the knowledge that you have. And there could be others. 
Uh, but most importantly, when you see on this common job uh, site, you will see generative AI next to machine learning. So you have to be ready also to improve your skill in machine learning as much as you can. Unless it depends on what type of job, I mean, type of job, of course. I mean, if you need, uh, if you had like um, as a rag developer, maybe they focus on right pipeline, you might need to worry about the deep uh, part of machine learning. It depends on the job, but right now you don't know what kind of job that you're going to get, so you have to be ready to face every aspect when you come to uh, really being the best candidate for job position so you have to give a space for machine learning you don't have to I, i'm just repeating this because you don't have to lose focus so i'm just if i so machine learning is behind me it will not be it will go hand in hand so you need to give it a place to understand machine learning as well uh, i mean last time from last cohort some of them also will uh, get a job as a model evaluation tester, which is basically what they're doing, they just test the model performance. And they will compare the model response with, they will give, be given a data database with a lot of data set. And their job is basically to compare the model response with the data set and just get review. So this kind of job also exists for, but so it really depends on what kind of job that you're gonna get. Uh, but be ready to improve yourself in every aspect. So I hope that helps. Uh, any other question? What about Docker? It's, it's part of software engineering in our worker, so you having that skill really helps. Okay, is it clear or what platform is there for those kind of jobs? Uh, that you don't have to worry about. I mean, uh, Tena Academy also has its own system that helps you to apply for jobs. Uh, the career team as well will help with providing you the sites for applying. So uh, you'll be with that one. You'll be covered. So, is there a questions or at least some? Do you get some clarifications? what to expect from generative AI. Okay, great. What are those? Yes, I'll share it on the drive. Okay, great. So I'm going to take the reaction. Uh, it's clear what's expected in the generative AI track. So if no more question, I guess we can stop the presentation. Okay, so uh, as always, you can reach out to me, DM me on the Slack if you have questions on this regard, plus on the career path after the three months ended. We'll also come here, yeah, so we'll, we will help each other out with whatever question, interview question that you will have. And we have more specific email projects after the 12 weeks challenge. You mean like uh, recommendation projects or projects like you will do on the script, uh, like you have done so far, our work? Uh, it's the, the projects that, that could be useful for further uh, fine tuning our abilities on ML projects. So basically, we are expecting this 12 weeks project will help, but I will talk also with Matt Nael and we can maybe give you some recommendations uh, of, I mean, we, I, I think it's better if we have a talk with the team and see if we can provide you any project. But in general, in the following three months that you will stay with us on your job search phase, we will focus on your improving your skills. I mean, if it's Python, we'll give you Python questions, and uh, it will happen. Python questions from HackerRank, from LeetCode, and we will track 
your skills on those because you will need that on uh, there will be this weekly challenge not required like the one you have done before but that will help you to improve your in your particular track uh, challenges will be given so you can improve those skills so uh, when you see the next three months you will understand so a lot of uh, we will stay together with projects we're improving your skill we are giving you continuous comments on improving your skill based on uh, the performance that we you know from grading your work and everything we will give you personal comments, improve your MLOP skill, your MLOP flow skill. So I think that will help you when it comes to uh, improving. Okay, so if no more questions, I thank you for joining in.